Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. If you lost, la watched last week's video, I will post it right here if you didn't. Um, I started talking about the revamp of our video, and or our channel, and I was talking about how on Mondays we are going to do um, more videos about David and Maya's relationship, and then on Wednesdays it's going to be our baby girls, like little updates on her. And Friday is going to be um, uh, more on updates on James. And then there's going to be occasional Saturday videos where it's going to be us as a family. And I'm not sure exactly how it's all going to work out yet, but that is the plan. And um, right now, I'm on mine and David's relationship. We are doing the Love Dare. I'm going to be doing the Love Dare um, challenge. And it is by Stephen and Alex Kendrick. And it is a Christian challenge for your marriage. You might have also heard of Fireproof. It is kind of along the same lines of Love, Dare, I think by the same people. But in the last video, I um, talked about that there, there is a Love, Dare test you can do online. And I've let me look at that up. And you can take that Love Dare test. It's an online, anonymous, free test to see where you stand in your marriage. And that's at lovedaretest.com. So I went online and took that test. And I wanted to kind of go over the results with you and what it kind of said um, for me and our uh, relationship. Um, I have everything written down, so if I'm looking down, you know that's why I'm doing it. But um, it goes like when you after you take the test, there's like you answer so many questions, and then at the end it says what your likely weaknesses are, your weaknesses or your strengths. And um, I took this before I started this love dare a while back, probably a year or so ago, and. I took it and I had some strengths in there and I don't know if it's just a season we're in right now this is me being pregnant by the time you see this video I our little baby girl is here but um I don't know it, it might have just been because we we weren't going through as much at the time but um, I have more weaknesses now than I did I used to do but uh, or we had last time I took it but um that's a good thing well, not a good thing that we have weaknesses but it's a good thing that I wanted to start this up because it's just gonna strengthen our marriage and um, also kind of want to mention that Dave really doesn't know what I'm doing this um, well I guess he knows now because the um, sorry James is talking in the background but um, he probably knows it now but it just I wanted to kind of do it and see how it strengthens our relationship. You want to come be on the video? You want to come be in the video? Mm -hmm. okay. <clears throat> but today I am going over our love dare test. Okay, I don't know if y'all have three year olds, but um, or if you ever had one, but leave them alone for five minutes and they draw on themselves <laughs> their hands in both hands. Are you not going to be in the video? <clears throat> okay, well, let's get started. Um, the first one is a likely weakness, and it is attention. It says, being attentive to your spouse lie in the root causes of selfishness and laziness. And I underli underline selfishness and laziness because that is something I feel like I kind of maybe it's more I struggled that more I think more than David does um, I really don't see him being selfish or lazy so that's definitely a weakness for me but it says the process of dealing with this problem requires active intentional shift toward thoughtfulness and understanding putting your wife or husband's needs first um, that's something I mean I, I'm, I'm not gonna say I don't I, I feel like I do put Jane uh, David ahead of me 
sometimes, but I definitely think it's something I could definitely work on too. I think it's just because I'm being a mother and I'm always putting James ahead of myself and I'm just tired at the end of the day and I, and I know I should put David should be my number one. Sometimes being a mother, uh, unfortunately that's not always true and um, that's definitely a weakness that I need to work on. Then it says, relinquishing the right to do or say whatever you want so that you can accommodate what your spouse needs to say or wants to do. This requires intentionally choosing to pause what you are doing and listening with both your eyes and your ears. This is something that I now, I need to also work on. I think David actually kind of does need to do this too. Um, David sometimes talks a lot <laughs> and I start drifting off because he repeats himself a lot. <laughs> and um, and we've had this conversation before. He knows that I say this, but um, but if he thinks I he doesn't think I'm listening or it's getting through to me, he'll just repeat it. Maybe not the exact same words, but in different ways. And sometimes I'll just start be like. Okay, I, I heard it the first time, but um, but David also, I feel like he needs to work on it too. Sometimes I'm in there talking to him, and he might be on his phone or playing a video game or something. So that's something I still feel like that we both need to work on. Our next one is acceptance, and it is a clear weakness. It says that perhaps your wife or your husband says they are often feel the weight of your disapproval, the constant pressure from you to change. My biggest issue would be that I am always on David about throwing away his trash and just putting things up after he has done with them. Um, a lot of it would just be like he has some trash. And then he literally puts it right next to the trash can or leaves it on the counter. Right next to the trash can or leaves it on the counter. And I'm, I'm always on him on that. And um, also, he like he would leave out his socks. And I'm just like, can you go put it in the hamper, please? And I, I'm not saying, this is just where I'm coming from. I'm not saying I'm perfect because I'm not perfect by any deal. Um, I'm definitely more probably on the messy side. But I always feel like I at least get my trash in the trash can. <laughs> but, um, so I don't want people to think, oh, you're just down in your husband. I'm not. This is just where I'm coming from. When I took this test, this is how I'm feeling. And this is what I'm thinking of when I was taking this test. But um, the next thing it says, but I have to remember that I am an imperfect person, like I just said, too. And, and the imperfect person in need of their understanding, patience, and frequent forgiveness. I feel like I understanding. I understand. He says that he does it because he's ADD and he always forgets. Um, I try to have patience with that. He also, um, I don't know if he really wants me to bring this up, but he. Um, is you have we talked about it before and even there's some videos about it um he has neck and back issues so he takes medication sometimes for it and when he's on and his he has his add which um a lot of people do but sometimes kind of makes him forgetful and so i try to have patience with that because i know what he's going or i don't know what he's going through but i know that he has other stuff on his mind like work or something like that so the, in the long run trash and socks and clothes aren't that big of a deal it's just something that i d do have to deal with and so it would make my life easier if he could put them up um but i do i feel like i forgive him i feel like i have patience with it it's just yeah um, next is to improve in acceptance, you must battle against these tendencies to be overly and quickly critical. Also, try to put yourself in your spouse's shoes. 
I try to do that. Well, at least, now that I'm sitting here thinking about it, I believe I do that. I think about it. <laughs> um, give them permission to be human and make mistakes. I think that's a, a really important one. It says, check your expectations. Are you fair and realistic? I don't see how it's not fair or realistic to put your trash up. Um, what is truly motivating them? I feel like they are fair and I do get frustrated. I do it because I I feel like what I'm wanting is fair. I don't feel like the expectations are too high. And I do get frustrated when I have to clean up the messes. So The goal is to love your spells unconditionally and praising them often so when he does put it in the trash maybe i need to praise him more often <laughs> all right when he i see him cleaning up his clothes i need to work on that um allowing them to fail remaining patient until they see the need for change themselves and to be an encourager not on the attack Maybe I need to figure out different ways to say it, David, so I don't. He doesn't feel like I'm attacking him. The way they explain this makes me feel like how you would treat a child. Oh yeah, <laughs> that was my little notes. Um, I do feel like I have a a my degree is development and family studies, development of. Um, from pretty much birth to death um, and family studies is what I went to school with in and got my degree in and I feel like this is kind of what I learned in my degree and it's just kind of feel like that's what you're talking about that's how you would talk to a child and I don't really know no I, I agree with it but at the same time it's like should, I don't want to make David feel like I'm treating him and talking to him like a child. Because he's not. He's an adult. We have a child. So that's the only thing I kind of question about this part. But um, then I also wrote in maybe it's a way to do it in easy steps. Or the way they're, they're trying to explain it in easy steps maybe. I don't know. This is, that's just kind of how I'm feeling about this part. Next is affirm affirmation. Affirmation. Um, this is a likely weakness. It is. It says none of us entered into marriage wanting to tear down or wound, wound our spouse's esteem, or at least I hope not. Um, and yet, time and human nature will inevitably lead us there unless we actually begin to notice, appreciate, and affirm. The positive qualities present in our spouse. Where there, where this is a struggle for you, take time to rehearse and be thankful for their strengths. David's are, he's hardworking, he's caring, he's a great father and husband, and that's, that's just to name a few. Then it says to become diligent in protecting them from words that would harm or embarrass them. You don't want to say anything that you'd later regret, especially to other people. And you just don't want to hurt their self-esteem either. Um, tell them every day how valuable they are to you. I've actually kind of tried to start this. Um, I feel like I don't know if he knows how much I love him and how much I appreciate him. And care about him and but um being a mother like I said before it, I feel like you kind of put your spouse on the back burner even though you shouldn't you should still, still also be number one and I'm trying my hardest to work on that and that's another reason why I wanted to love dare just because I need to work on putting David one and letting him know how much I accept, accept him love him and appreciate him and it says and the endeavor to treat them with greater honor than you do anyone else in the world. That is something that I truly do need to work on. 
Next is affection. This is a, it said a clear weakness for me. Um, I did not think this is a weakness for David at all. But um, many of the things that hamper our ability to be tender and affectionate with each other come from various hurts we've endured. From childhood, from others, from earlier days in your marriage. Um, I had a really good childhood, so I can't blame my affection issues with that because I have very loving parents. But I was in three abusive relationships before I met David. And so I think that might be where some of my affection issues come from. Um, when David and I were first were in, met and I guess it was our, those love, I, mean, I love David still, but you're still, I was still a very affectionate and were loving on him. But um, I guess as time has gone by, the less affection I have become. But then it says, but even if the nature or experience, you're not the touchy-feely type, you can still let love motivate you to be kind, which I think I am, to be helpful, to overcome any obstacles to affection by learning what your spouse needs and enjoys from you. Like I said before, I was more touchy-feely in the beginning of our relationship, but unfortunately, time, duties, and motherhood has made me less affectionate. I know this negatively affects David because he is still a very touchy person, and I know it's probably one of his love languages. <laughs> uh, I know it is that he um, needs that love or hugs and kisses and... I just feel like <laughs> it's always funny it, it seems like every time I'm in the kitchen cooking dinner or making James food or something David's like oh something about a woman in the kitchen I don't know but he that's when he's always like lovey-dovey on me <laughs> and I'm like okay David this is not the right time um, and I think that kind of hurts his feelings because he always says that I always say it's not the right time but literally it's not so, <laughs> sorry, David. Um, as the Love Dare explains, it's about leading your heart rather than following your heart. Choosing to do delight in you, one delight in your one and only. All right, the next one is allowing, and it says a likely it's a likely weakness for me. It says, why would you not want to be invested in your spouse's growth and success? Do you struggle with being controlling and overbearing? I honestly don't think I am controlling or overbearing. But it says, if you are, have you might considered how this might be hindering your spouse's growth and success? It says, do you recognize that nagging or scolding is usually a counterproductive attempt to manage or control them. It says, ask yourself, what is it that I fear about giving my spouse more freedom, opportunity, and responsibility? Okay, one of my main fears is being cheated on because I have been cheated on in my some past relationships. Um, this comes from my own self-confidence issues. I don't know if I am hindering David from growing in success. I don't feel like I am, but it's a fear of mine, even though I don't believe David would ever cheat on me. Um, that says, yes, giving them permission to stretch and grow may require sacrifice. Corrop, 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 I can never say the word. Cooperation, flexibility, even biting your tongue at times but you're both more likely to reach your full potential if you support and court and complete each other. If you forsake your stubbornness, which I am very stubborn, and replace it with prayer for support and mutual submission. The next is apology, and this is a clear weakness for me. 
Prideful people do not apologize and stubborn pride in a marriage is toxic. Not good for me. Um, not good for anybody, but especially since I'm the stubborn one. Um, David can be a little stubborn, so I'm not going to say he's not stubborn, but he probably does fall before I do, and he'll even tell you that. Um, twice in the movie Love Story, this now classic film has voiced by a character, love means never having to say you're sorry. I've never seen that movie, but um, that may be the worst untrue line ever spoken in cinematic history because authentic love requires humility. And only authentic love will humble itself to apologize for a simple mistake, a hurtful word, or a damaging deed. Pride makes excuses for our behavior, defends and justifies it, or shifts the blame elsewhere. But the health of your marriage depends on your willingness to look first at your own faults and take responsibility for your unloving words and actions. Genuine apologies break down walls and open doors to forgiveness and reconciliation. The movie line should have been, love means never being unwilling to say you're sorry. Okay, the last one is abiding. And this is a li another likely weakness for me. Not every marriage starts out with either partner interest in God. Thankfully, David and I both were and still are. But then it says, maybe that was you not thinking you needed him or his guidance to make your marriage work. You may have also grown to believe that if your wife or husband doesn't cooperate with you and reciprocate your love for them, there's not much point in keeping your marriage going. But God can change your motivation for marriage. He can give you a love that transcends your circumstances and continues on even when you don't feel like it. It starts with surrendering your life to Him, staying dependent on Him every single day, and choosing to solely in order to please Him, even if your spouse isn't pleased with you at the moment. Okay, so that is my Love Dare um, test results. As you can see, most of them were weaknesses, unfortunately. And again, that is one reason why I wanted to do this Love Dare challenge. Um, um, I hope that you got something out of this. Hope it wasn't too boring for you. But um, next week, I'm actually going to start the challenge of it. This was just the kind of the beginning, um, kind of introducing you to Love Dare. Um, I hope that you will stay tuned and watch next week's. Um, so please like this video, subscribe, and hit that bell so you won't miss any of our videos. And I will see you all next week or next time. Okay, thanks guys. Bye.